morning. morning. Are you with me? Yes. Got a little bit of energy. I'm told I got ten minutes. <laughs> Nine. No. Anyway, thank you, Reverend Cheryl, for having me. Thank you, faculty and staff. Thank you for the work you do, administration as well, keeping alive a mission that changed my life all the better permanently, favorably, about 40 years ago when I first arrived here. And I'm doing my best in my own humble way for the rest of my walk, trying to look back, give back, come back every now and then. I live a bit away from here, so it's been too long since my last visit, but it's great to be back. And most of all, thank you to Ms. McDermott. Like all the other alums spread out over this globe, we're just so grateful for the hard work you do, for the love you bring to your job, and the decades of service you and your mom carried on nobly to the benefit of us all. So, thank you, Ms. McTurney. <laughs> so, it's History Month. I imagine you're learning a bit about the stories of the school, the origin, some of the people involved. It's a proud, rich tradition that you are part of. You are privileged. I was privileged. I remain privileged. But I hope you're picking up some of the names from the past. Don't be bashful here. If I ask, Colonel, does that mean anything to anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Who's the Colonel? Young man in the back with his hand up. I love it, by the way. That gentleman right there, founder. Incredible man. If you don't know his story, get on it quick. Do yourself a favor. Who's Charlie? Who's Doc? Mr. Charles, maybe to some. His son, Dr. Schreiner, headmaster while I was a student here. All kinds of other names that should be coming out to you. People who've worked here, people who never worked here, have no linear connection to this mission, nor any of us. But somehow, they toil, and they work, and they sacrifice their time and treasure to support a mission that really shouldn't be any of their concern in many respects. One of those people in the very back right there, if I say Sally, maybe you don't know what that means, but anybody who says Sally in this world, I only think of one person. Sally Graham, she and her family have supported this institution for decades simply because she was called upon to do so and sees it a privilege to be around you young man and to be part of this mission. We all ought to thank people like Sally every opportunity we can when they come and go from campus. They can be doing lots of other things. If I say the name Tyler, does that mean anything? Give me a hand. Somebody. Young man in the back, come on up here, please. You're my designated guy. Come on. Hey, time's a wasted, man. Come on, I'm down to five minutes. Now you wish you had kind of like really marinated in those final few months, okay? 
Hold it together. You'll be glad you did. So, seniors, get ready, because graduation season's upon us. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And you can bet. In a lot of graduations around the country, the go-to line is going to be, follow your passions. Do what you love. Make, do what makes you happy. That's all fine and good. Do you think I'm going to stand up here and argue with that? No, don't follow your dreams. Pursue misery. That's not my message today. But we don't get to script life the way that we often would like to. Certainly as far as our careers go. So maybe while you're chasing your dream, you might think about a plan B. And the best way to go around that plan B is to make sure you're well-rounded, you're open-minded, and you're nimble. You're opportunistic. The reason Tyler fits into this story because he became a great friend and mentor of mine. And one day I'm sitting over lunch with him and just remarking on the incredible career this man had in business, his own business, and investing in a bunch of other businesses. I said, Tyler, how did you get started in this? Did you always want to go into business? Did you always want to be a salesman? Oh, Billy, no. No, no, no. When I was getting ready to graduate from the University of Virginia with my chemistry degree, I took an aptitude test. Any of you take an aptitude test? Any of the seniors been taking tests that might reveal to you what you might be predisposed, a path to follow, what career might speak to the person this test determined you are? Well, you'll take your share of aptitude test ultimately. Tyler took one, and the message was loud and clear. Tyler, whatever you do, do not go into sales. You have no predisposition to a career in sales. So what did Tyler do? He went right out and found a sales job. That's what I call counterintuitive reasoning. It's not always so obvious. It's not always the best thing to follow the crowd and do everything that everyone else is doing. Think for yourself. Tyler did, and he taught me a valuable lesson. I couldn't believe his answer. You went and did what you weren't supposed to do. Well, Billy, it was clear I had a deficiency. I had some things I needed to work on. And so I asked you all, the athletes in the room, I would imagine that's all of you, basketball players, man, I can shoot. Ooh. Yeah, but can you play D? Have you got stamina? Can you go line to line? Can we press? Can you play with fouls? Can you pass? Are you good in the locker room? Are you coachable? Well, tell me if you can shoot. If you can shoot, keep practicing your shooting. Well, we have practice for another reason, to work on your deficiencies. Give thanks to places like Church Farm that insist upon providing you a well-rounded education. Chase your dreams with all your vigor. They're not always actualized through what you do for a living. You might be lucky enough. There might be a Kobe Bryant here that just has it all the way he saw it from the time he was 12. You may not. And what you might find out is somebody like me, who had a plan, law school, gonna do all this, it'll be cool, people will be impressed, my mom's happy. I never thought about sales, I never thought about starting my own business. People would do that from broken homes, youngest of six, never knew their father. But somebody else does that. Well, Tyler taught me differently. And all these years later, I can say it was nothing I had planned for or imagined, but it's a thousand times better. And I hope you all keep an open mind to the roads that may diverge, cause you question and some reservation, have confidence. You come from the church farm school. You are loved. You matter. You are known by name. You are connected to a lineage that is special. Forty years later, when I have a conversation with somebody I've not met, the point at which they ultimately stop and say, tell me more about that, is when I say, I went away to a boarding school with about 150 other young men from around the globe. Really? Tell me more about that. Gettysburg College, they don't care. LaSalle, forget about it. No, that's different. That's special. And I use it for all it's worth all these years later, and I hope you do as well. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and go in peace to know that you have been counted upon and valued and known by name here, and that is a rare experience anymore. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the attention. I really appreciate being back here.